cool. So interview with Johan Dirix in Antwerp. Johan, thank you very Thank much you. for inviting me into your awesome premises. Pleasure is all mine. I'm glad that you could make it over. Finally. <laughs> and, uh, at last. And now, at last. Now we finally can meet each other in the garage. Absolutely, my pleasure. You have, without doubt, one of the coolest collections of Porsche 911s that I've seen for a very long time. It, it seems quite focused as well in, in the particular cars you've gone for. Actually, I never had the intention of collecting cars. I am a collector type, mm -hmm. but I never had the intention of collecting cars. And when I bought my first car, uh, in 1991, which was my first new 911, I knew that it had to be an RS, an N64 RS. And that goes back to my childhood. Mm -hmm. My grandfather on um, mother's side, he uh, started driving horses in 69. One day I remember we talked about it in Seaside and he said to me, what would you do if you could buy a car? Would you buy a Porsche or a Corvette? And I said to him, definitely not a Corvette. <laughs> and so I like to think that that's why he bought a Porsche. And I don't know, actually. So I was 14 years and I remember that Greg and Haywood won the 24 hours of Daytona. And in my childish mind, my grandfather's car was a car that won the 24 hours of Daytona. So it was like coming from the street, going to the track and yeah. winning the race. On top of that, it won two weeks afterwards, the 12 hours of Seaweed. But I bought a, a 3.6 964 RS as my very first car, and it started with the RST. That's the thing with all your cars, from what I can see, is that they're all purest Porsches. Well, yes, I think it comes down to the RS, the range port factor, uh, the lightweight factor, uh, which might not be obvious looking at my body language, but anyway, I, lo I love the light lightweights. Uh, because I thought it was absolutely great to try and make the lightest out of, of the 911. Uh, so that's why I focused on the RSs. And I have to admit that I was happy to be able to buy the cars in a period when nobody cared for them and where, where they didn't command the price they command today. It's unthinkable no, now, isn't it? It's unthinkable now. People think now that those are the holy grail, those are the cars that you want to have. But at that time, they were old cars. I never ever told in my life that I would ever have an R and then uh, Lady Fortune came, came by and I was able to buy one. And I think that is the, that R has the, how would I say, the DNA of every race 911 that has been produced after that. Even today, if you look at the, the race cars today, their great, great, great grandfather was the R. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think it's a very important car. And so I went back to the R and came all the way up to the, to the modern cars. And then, of course, I made a little, little a bit of exceptions, a couple turbos. Uh, and then another big thing was at a certain moment, if you have the RSs, why not go for the RSRs, which are the race, race team of the car. And then, fortunately enough, I was able to uh, collect all the RSRs. I want to go back to the 67R that you have. Obviously, there's not many of them made, and people rarely see them <coughs> in public, let alone be able to drive them. So coming from a person that has, what is that car like to drive? It's a fabulous little car. And I have to underline a little. If you compare an old 911 with the new 991s, you immediately see that the old 911 is a little nimble car. Uh, also weight-wise, I mean, if you, if you come think of it, that the R weighs only 800 kilos. The drive is still pretty fast, but it has the suspension of a 60s car, which is like in dancing, I call it a little bit the, the French con con of the, uh, <laughs> of the 911s. Yeah. It lifts the foot, it goes to the corners, <laughs> it dances a little bit. It's a dancing car, but it's a very fun car. And then your collection goes through the 2.7 RS, which needs no introduction to, to our viewers, then onto the 3 litre RS, and then we get to the SC RS, which not many people know too much about. When I first saw one, little did I know what it was. I think it's an absolutely unique car. People will rather know the 959 because it did uh, all those rally raids, Paris Dakar and stuff like that. But basically the SCRS came into being because the 959 wasn't ready for racing. Everybody knows the 964 RS. The 964 RS 3.8 is a, is a rare beast. To drive the two back to back, how do they compare? Well, actually there is no comparison. The 3.8 RS is a different animal. Uh, not necessarily the engine. It's a little bit more powerful than, two, than 3.6, but it's chassis wise the chassis is completely different uh, a 3.6 is a rather bumpy steering car um, on public roads i would 
call it rather uncomfortable, unpleasant. Whereas if you're driving a 3.8, it's a very pleasant car. It has a very pleasant road holding. It's very efficient. It is faster than 3.6, not, not because of the engine, but because of the, uh, of the chassis. Mm. It's got better brakes, so it's a far better car. And I think today uh, people are trying to locate 3.8, so only 55 cars made. Mm. So it's a very rare beast on top of that. Do you think the water-cooled Rensports carry over that Rensport DNA from the air-cooled stuff? I would be inclined to say no, because I'm an air-cooled guy. Yeah. <coughs> but uh, I wouldn't do it justice, and the answer is yes. Uh, they're fabulous cars. You sense that the engineers at Porsche have reached a level which is absolutely exquisite and which is probably better than the RSs ever were in the old days. If you look at the 996, which was the very first RS they made, um, I think it's still an underrated car. Not only because of the numbers that were made, but because of the car. It's mm. a fabulous car. I would even say that you have to wait until the 997 4 liter to get a car that's better than the 996 GT3 RS. It's the steering on the 996 RS, I think, is one of the best I've yes. experienced. Yes, Then you come to the R, and obviously the 500 brake horsepower engine is fabulous, but in my opinion, in the R, the best thing is a combination between clutch, shifter, and gas. That, yeah. that play uh, of those three elements is so well done. It's absolutely fabulous. What do you think, then, is the sweet spot of that entire RS lineup? That's a very difficult one. Um, that's, probably, that's probably the reason why you ask questions. Um, but I would say my spontaneous answer would be the 3 liter RS. Because the 3 liter RS is engine wise probably not the most performant car. It's compared to 2.7, not so much faster, but it is so much a race car that you still can drive on the roads. The, the grip, from, in my experience, compared to 2.7 is unbelievable. Yes. I, I really didn't expect that, actually. I must admit. I was expecting you, you to say 964 3.8. As I've said from the start of the video, we're really grateful that you're letting people like ourselves into the place and to have a look around. You've had a business spawned off that. Well, oh. actually, it's, it's, uh, it's a hobby that uh, grew a little bit out of hand. If you're in the street car game, say you're serviced by the dealer, dealer network, that would be great. Uh, once you get into race cars, that's a different matter. So then you have to start working with your own people. And I was lucky enough to find two guys who, are, who have written Porsche all over their body and their mind. So we started that about 15 years ago. Um, and we've seen quite a lot of cars. We've seen GT1s, GT2s. We've, we've seen so many cars that are very interesting that most dealerships in the world have, have, haven't ever seen in their life. They have been in here. Information's important on these cars, isn't it? In my opinion, the only thing that's right is going back to originality. That is the only right way to restore. I think we have to go to period materials, we have to go to period coloring, we have to go to period uh, using of nuts and bolts and screws and stuff like that. And that, therefore you need quite a lot of uh, information. You need good books. There are quite a lot of good books. You need magazines, you need photographs. I always would love to see somebody who can point out mistakes on my restorations. I would love to see that because then I could learn something with the period information, with period photographs as, as supporting evidence, trying to find out what for the race car, what race has it done, who was the driver, uh, what was the decoration, what was the sponsorship, where were the sponsors, how big were they. What I regret about people buying cars is ignorance. And ignorance is, is a human factor. You can do something about it, you can educate yourself. And if you can't do it yourself, ask somebody who knows about it. Uh, it's too stupid to have money and to buy the wrong thing. Because with the same money you could buy the right thing. Johan, thanks very much for Please, sharing your passion. Thank, thank you very, very much. much thank indeed. you.